Nights Today. The 11th, August, and we're getting on to the almost the end of the year. And this tuning, my friends and my followers, Dr. Alfred Sparman here to you this morning. I come to you with a different tone. I, I was one of my days that I was waiting for. And you know, it's mommy's day today, so guys, Olga Doris Sparman, this is her half hour. As a woman, parallel to none, my partner. And we come to you every Saturday from 9 to 9.30 with living and living and you can't speak about living without embracing dying oh, and the transition and all of these things that we have to encounter as mortals. So I come to you this morning, morning with a heavy heart and we will talk. This is mommy's half an hour. We were talking about my partner, Olga Doris Sparman. She is my mom. Uh, we've been together forever. You know, uh, a young boy growing up. Uh, eight siblings, four boys, four girls. Uh, we all lived uh, uh, as in, uh, a very affluent family. Dad was a police officer. And mom, she was a nurse. And you know, we lived in a two-bedroom home and... Eight children in one room. So uh, sometimes I look at my little daughter. She's got a room for herself. She doesn't even want to sleep there. Eight of us. The girls on the bed and the boys on the floor. Mm, yeah. So, tells you that anybody can do anything. You just have to just keep pushing forward. But for me, it was Alga. She guided me. And I might be, people may look at me and say, Dr. Sparman, Full of strength, perseverance, persistence. Uh, it's her. She was behind the scenes. Pushing me. And then I remember two years, two and a half years ago at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Had seizures and kidney shutdown. And some wonderful doctors just came by and helped me to take care of her. But I left around one thirty. Uh, the way she looked, comatose, I says, uh, she, I'm going home to wait for the call that she's gone. The doctors would have done everything within their power to do, and then the call didn't come. I begged her before, I says, Lord, give me one more year with her, please. One more year, because I had something to do. I had to publish that first book. I said, I want to dedicate it to her, and you know what? I came the next morning, she was sitting having breakfast. And she did many of those roundabout turns. But this time, and not only one year God gave her for me, two years she saw the second book switched, 2012, and then her birthday yeah, would have been the first of uh, September, just a couple of a week and a, two weeks and a half away. And I want her to make that too. You know, we ask God for things, and you know, the rest is left up to Him. She was weak and tired, and I think she said to herself, Alfred, you okay now? You know, I'll leave. You'll be okay. I think that's what she said, because this time she died at 3.45 p.m. on Thursday afternoon. Sunrise, September 1st, 1931. Sunset. August 9th, 2012, 80 years. She's the oldest living Sparman. I am thankful for all of my close friends and everybody who are grieving with me to my, the loss of my loved one and my, the dearest woman to me and my partner. I, that's all I say, my partner. So at this point, uh, there are a lot of things we want to talk. We talk a little bit about her as we go on. But I want you, wherever you are, just be silent for one minute with me. We're going to, on this radio station, we'll do one minute of silence. And if you're driving, please pull over. Please don't close your eyes or anything like that and drive. But just 
One, you don't have to close your eyes. Just one minute of silence for mommy. I'll go. Doris Parman, a strong woman, a warrior. Oh, much. And no puns intended. But for me, oh, she was everything. So, starting now, and we will go. One minute. Starting now. Okay, I'm back. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, thank you. You have done all you can there for me. I needed nothing else. That in itself, you thousands of warriors and people out there. No one understands what to lose. What is it to lose a mom? You can try to understand, but until it comes and knock your door, I saw the gentleman came and put her. In a bag, and when they closed the door, closed that zipper on that bag, I felt like somebody ripped my heart out. But you can't expect life to be all good, as Bob Marley says. You know, the rain falls, <laughs> everybody's housed up, and the sun don't shine on one man. So, living this life—that's what we talk about. Living this program. I want you guys to keep tuning into this program. Because it's not about just living. It's all of the things that we have to do while we live. You listen to this program, you'll find about, you'll, you'll hear about lots of things that people face in life. And it will encourage you so when your time comes, you can stand up strong. A little bit stunned, but sober. When you, you can never understand how that losing a loved one is that is the most traumatic thing actually in life uh, brothers and sisters and father and, eh, yeah and who's a mom a mom is not only biological anybody whom is uh, exhibiting motherly duties and so forth like Olga uh, for the few people uh, she will be leaving her desire was to go back to the place of birth in Guyana, so we'll be, the body will be leaving on Wednesday, and um, the funeral arrangements and all of those things will be kept over there. However, for the few family and close friends who would like to view her, a lot of people came to the Sparman Clinic, and uh, which uh, she was there for three years, and I've been taking care of mom for, oh, at least she was, she had five strokes. <laughs> Most times, after three, you go. Mom took five and still stood it all. This, with all her faculties intact. So, uh, for all you guys who've been visiting her and who know her and all the close, all my close friends and family, this is a small little gathering at the Dungs and Wilson Funeral Home in Eagle Hall from 10 to 12 on Tuesday, because she leaves on Wednesday. Don't forget, 10 to 12. Just those two hours. You can pay last respects coming. Tongues and Wilson Funeral Home and Eagle Hall, St. Michael. And, um, thank you so much, uh, uh, for all of your calls and your encouragement and your condolences. I want to thank you for have re my phones have been going off all the time since, uh, Thursday. And I want to thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to play a song here for mommy. If I can turn back the hands uh, by R. Kelly, and then uh, I'll be right back. If I could turn back things, I would. I'd like to go all the way back 30 years when she worked 
in a uh, New York hospital and she was back and forth. She was a diligent worker. Oh, she had never saw someone work like her. She'd up and down, subways, back and forth. And you should see how she run the wires as a head nurse. Oh, she was, oh, goodness. I think I got a lot of stuff from her. As a matter of fact, she might have been the nightest for me going into cardiology because most of her family uh, died early from heart disease or stroke. And, 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 and I tell you, you see, I talk about modification of lifestyle. Mom was a living example. She became a vegetarian in her very, very early 50s. And normally we die 50 to 60. Mom made 80 years old. So, guys, I am not telling you from theory and from what I read. I have seen it. As a matter of fact, she was motivational in me becoming a vegetarian. So, red meat, you stay away from red meat. Stay close to the plant. Stay away from the salt. Watch the sugar and stuff. And you'll add 20, 30 years easy to your life. Mom, I'll always love you. Yeah, that's uh, Whitney Houston. I will always love you. And Mom, I'll always love you for the late listeners who just came in. This half an hour is dedicated to Olga Doris Parman, my mom, my partner, uh, the most important woman in the world to me. We've been together uh, from a little child and even growing up in Brooklyn. And then from Brooklyn, I moved to Manhattan. She followed me. I moved from Manhattan to Jacksonville as I was doing my medical training. She followed me. From Jacksonville, I went to Miami was a practicing cardiologist there. She followed me. I went to Tennessee and and practicing, I was running a cardiology center over there. She followed me. And then when I moved to Barbados, she's there sitting down two months. Thereafter, I got a call. I'm coming. <laughs> we have been together. I've loved to partner. And I thank you, all you out there, for being strong with me. And, and all your condolences and all your love and all your prayers as you sent to me. Don't forget for the family, close family and friends, Dungs and Wilson Finner Home. Um, from 10 uh, to 12 on Tuesday. Tuesday is the 14th uh, of, um, uh, of August. So don't forget 10 to 12 because mom desired to go back to Guyana to be buried with dad and a brother of mine. So that was her last wish and she, among others. So uh, she'll be leaving on Wednesday. So you want to take a last glimpse before we see her again in heaven. Uh, you can come by um, close friends and family and take a look on those uh, 10 to 12. Uh, but as I said, this half an hour is dedicated to Olga D. Sparman, my mother, my friend, my partner, my everything. Uh, we're going to come on the Mariah Mar 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 Carey hero. She's my hero, Mom. Huh, you're behind the scenes. You push me. I got the strength from you. But before you left, I know you give me more. And I love you. I love you dearly. She's my hero. You know, bed number three is no more. All you patients who would have come in the Sparman Clinic Hospital, she occupied number three. She loved that number. And uh, I'm sure many of my patients who came in and would have met mom, you can come in and come to Dung's and Wilson Funeral Home, Eagle Hall, and see her between 10 and 12. On Tuesday, the 14th, uh, this week, Tuesday, of course. And because she's leaving on Wednesday on her way uh, uh, to Guyana to be rest uh, in the ground. And where we'll meet her someday. And I have no uh, questions about that. It's just a matter when. And the thing is with me and you... Modification of lifestyle, I told you that mom spared 30 years because she modified. You're going to be doing that too. And I compete in a positive way with my patients to live. Because I plan to live for a very, very, very long time. And, uh, you know, so pet number three and she would be sit laying down and she would... Uh, listen for my voice because her sight she had diabetes and her sight was a little affected so uh, she would uh, s uh, listen for my voice as I come to make wrongs with the other doctors and nurses and and if one morning for some reason I didn't come in she said what she'd ask <laughs> my home name was Steve she said what happened to Steve today she'll set upstairs to make sure I'm okay uh, stuff like that, you know, the surgery, a patient would have surgery and come back out. Uh, mommy would, uh, well, how is she doing? She's doing okay, good. Those are the things, always behind the scenes. Wonderful woman, 
wonderful friend, wonderful human being. Oh, everything you can think about, soft words. Oh, she can be angry, and she sit down and she look, and you know she would just quietly tell you what she has to say. And I would see her look before she left on Thursday, three forty-five in the afternoon. She just a few hours before that, she just stared at me and didn't say anything. She just looked at me. I think she was telling me, "Al, you're okay. We'll meet again, Mom. I love you. You have eight siblings, Mom. One is gone, so it's seven left. And <laughs> but we all love you, and we know you love us, and you loved everybody you touched. You loved, and you loved, and even the people you did not touch, you love." So the world has missed some special individual. We've lost somebody dearing. We love you, and I thank you all for sharing with me this half an hour. I thank you all for your condolences, and I love you. Ah,、uh, we close off with "Amazing Grace." This is her song. She used to sing in the church, and she sang this song with. Oh, with great passion and her voices and the way she pulled the notes. <sighs> That where is your sting? <laughs> One day, we mortals will overcome. Amazing grace, Reuben, shattered. God bless you.